Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of VT Workshop, we're going to be looking at some sample questions for the subject English. So there are very few questions for English, so we're going to be looking at how to solve these questions in detail, and we're going to be looking at uh, from where are these questions taken from, so the probable areas that you should study about. Let's look at our first question. Read the following passage and answer the question that follows. Choose the correct answer. His instrument struck against something hard, dangerously near the kidney. It's not quite at the kidney, my friend, Sadao murmured. My friend. He always called his patients, and so he did now, forgetting that this was his enemy. Now this is an extract from the story The Enemy. Um, this is found in <clears throat> Vistas, which is the supplementary reader for Class 12 English. So this is one of the few, one of the sources from where the questions are taken from. So they take extracts from books. So it is a good idea if you know what the book is, then it will really help you in answering the questions in context. Otherwise, it it, it doesn't really matter because they usually ask questions in context from the passage itself. So you can ded deduce it from the passage. Let's look at our question. To whom does Sadao attend to in the lines above? So as you can see, um, we can see that there is someone named Sadao. He has an instrument which struck against something hard, dangerously near the kidney. So we can assume that he's a doctor treating a patient from the first line. And it says, he's, it's not quite at the kidney, my friend. My friend is what we always called his patients forgetting that this was his enemy. So he's uh, treating a patient who happens to be an enemy, so this is probably wartime. And since the name Sadao uh, you know, implies that he's Japanese, we can safely assume that this is between the Japanese and the Americans in World War II. So we can assume all of this from this particular extract, and then now we can look at the question. To whom does Sadao attend to in the lines above? Is it a relative, his friend, his enemy, a patient? Now, option A, we can, uh, you know, dismiss that because n nowhere in the passage is it said that it's a relative of his. Now, the the words friend, enemy, and patient are all present in here, so we'll need to eliminate them based on in the on the passage. My friend, he always called his patients, so. The word my friend is what Sadao uses to, you know, talk to his patients whenever he's working. So it's, it's, a, it's a habit of his. But there is no, um, uh, what do you call it? We, we can assume that it's a patient, so it is partially correct. However, it's not the most appropriate option because there is something about the patient in the p phrase that, um, that, make, that is unique. So therefore, option D is incorrect. His friend is also not correct because the term my friend is what he always calls e every patient of his while he's doing surgery, so therefore option B is incorrect. The right option is option C, his enemy. Now if you look at the last part, it says, and so he did now, forgetting that this was his enemy. So as you can see, it's clearly written down in the extract that the person that Sadao is attending to na in the particular situation is an enemy of his. Now, let's look at another question. This is again a passage-based question. We need to choose the correct answer. The cry of not having money to do anything except carry on the business of making bangles, not even enough to eat, rings in every home. The young men echo the lament of their elders. So this is another extract. This is from the chapter Lost Spring. Again, it's from um, Vistas, from grade 12's English. So again, it's really important if you can read out the textbooks of grade 12's English. That would really help you in answering these passage type questions. The question that we have is, the elders lament because of what situation? Incapable of making bangles, just enough to eat, they do not have money for any other business. They have rings in their homes. So let's look at each of their quest each of the you know options. 
Option A, option D says they have rings in every, in their homes. While they do make rings and bangles, it isn't mentioned here in the passage. It says the cry of not having money except making bangles, etc. Um, it rings in every home. So the word rings is a verb here. So therefore, option D is incorrect. Option A says they're incapable of making bangles, which is again incorrect because the first part says the cry of not having any money to do anything except carry on the business of making bangles. So the only thing they can do is make bangles and nothing else. So option A is incorrect. Option B says they have just enough to eat. And he says not even enough to eat in the passage. In the passage it says not even enough. So they're even poorer than subsistence levels. So option B is incorrect. The right answer is option C. They do not have money for any other business. This is perfectly encapsulated in the first part of the passage. The cry of not having money to do anything except carry on the business of making bangles. So except making bangles, they have money for any business. So they do not have money for any other sort of business. So option C is the right option here. Now let's look at another type of question. What is the correct syllable division of the word indomitable? Well, the word here is I-N-D-O-M-I-T-A-B-L-E. That's the spelling. We need to find out the correct syllable division. Now, for these type of questions, it's a good idea to learn the International Phonetic Alphabet, or the IPA. Now, uh, uh, this can be found, uh, you can find guides to this in many, um, you know, videos as well as other online source materials. So we will use the International Phonetic Alphabet in order to find out the correct syllable division. So. In the International Phonetic Alphabet, we usually uh, write symbols for the sounds and also break them up into syllables. So this is, that's what we're going to do. For the word I-N-D-O-M-I-T-A-B-L-E, the phonetic alphabet goes like this. Now this is the phonetic, um, you know, representation of the word. The first uh, syllable is pronounced in, as in the word in or inside. The next syllable is do. This is the o sound, so in do. Next we have the syllable which pronounces mi. So this here is for the short i, so that's mi. Next we have t with a schwa, so therefore so that's the schwa is used because if you have an A in the middle of two consonants, that's probably the schwa comes in there. So therefore, it'll be indomit. And finally, we have BL. Uh, these two symbols, which represents the B and the L, l sounds. So if we were to break down the sounds accordingly, it'll be indomit. Bull. So the correct pronunciation would be indomitable. So as you can see, there are five syllables for it, and this is how you break it down. in do mi t So therefore, the correct um, syllable division for this word would be option C, indomitable. Uh, option A would sound like this, indomitable, which again, this is actually consisting of two syllables and not one. So A is incorrect. Then you have option B, which goes in dom e double. Again, they're breaking up a syllable in between. So instead of five, you now have six, even though this is joined together. And finally, you have um, option D, which goes in dom e double. Again, there is an inconsistent breakdown of syllables. So option D is incorrect. So the correct answer is option C, indomitable. So we count the number of syllables in there, 
and it's a good idea to use the IPA because <clears throat> in the International Phonetic Alphabet, they usually break down words based on their sound as well as their syllables. Let's look at the next question. This is again a passage type question. Read the following passage and the question below, choose the correct answer. Gandhi never contented himself with large political or economic solutions. He saw the cultural and social backwardness in the Champaran villages and wanted to do something about it immediately. He appealed for teachers. We need to find out which of the following statements is true about the passage. So here we need to find out the true statement. There are also questions where, you ca where you're asked to find out the false statement as well. So both these types of questions can appear. This is again an extract from um, Vistas. This is, I believe, the chapter Indigo from, the, from that textbook. So we have the four statements here. The first statement says, Gandhi was dissatisfied with political or economic solutions. In the extract, the word is never contented. The word, the phrase never contented is not uh, directly referring to dissatisfied. Sure, Gandhi did use large political and economic solutions. However, he was more concerned about social and cultural backwardness. So therefore, option A is not a true statement. What about option B? Gandhi was interested in the welfare of teachers of Champaran villages. Is that, is that present? Let's look at the second statement. He saw the cultural and social backwardness of, in the Champaran villages and wanted to do something about it immediately. And he appealed for teachers. So there were no teachers there, so therefore op the statement B is incorrect. Option C, Gandhi was happy about the cultural and social backwardness of Champaran villages. Again, as you can read the second statement, he wasn't happy about it. So therefore, option C was also incorrect. The correct answer is option D. Gandhi was hopeful that teachers could save villages from cultural and social backwardness. You can find that by uh, looking at both the second and the third statement. So he saw the cultural ba backwardness and he wanted to do something about it. And the action that he did was appeal to teachers. So this immediately gives us the um, connection that teachers would help villages to sa save themselves from so cultural as well as social backwardness. So therefore option D is the true statement about the passage. Now let's look at the final question for the day. Read the following stanza of a poem and the question that follows. Choose the correct answer. This is again an extract based question. However, he, we have a poem here by Pablo Neruda so therefore um, in poems, you usually ask meanings for words, um, descriptions of what the word means, etc., and also rhyme schemes. So we need to find out the rhyme scheme of the stanza. Is it ABAB, ABCD, ABBA, or ABCC? Now, using the letters A, B, and C, D, etc., for stanzas is representation that if you have two letters, and that means there are two sounds used at the beginning of the verse. If you have three letters in that rhyme scheme, it, mean, it would mean that there would be three different ta sounds. If you have four, that would be four different sounds, and etc. So let's look at how many different sounds are present in the stanza. So let's look at each of the lines. The first line is, it would be an exotic moment. So the first word is, it. The sound is, i. The i sound is used for used to start this stanza, I mean this line. So therefore, that's the first sound. We will consider that as A. Next we have without rush, without engines. So we have the W sound that's present here. We can use that as B. Next we will, next the, the next line reads, we would all be together. Again, the W sound is used here, so therefore the same since it's the same sound, we'll use the same letter, that's B. Finally, it's in a sudden strangeness. Again, the I sound is used here. So therefore, that goes back to the letter A. So therefore, the rhyme scheme would read out to be I, I, w, w, I, which when we use the letter representation goes out to be A, B, B, A. So therefore, the rhyme scheme of the particular stanza is A, B, B, A. There are only two sounds at the start of every line, it's either i or w, 
and the way they ar arrange themselves is like this. I, w, w, I. So therefore, it would be the A, B, B, A rhyme scheme. That would be the correct one. The other rhyme schemes are incorrect because they do not represent, either they do not represent the order correctly or they have more than two sounds. So, that concludes this episode of Witty Workshop. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Agile Rankmate, your partner in education. If you want to get the latest updates from our channel, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon that's present below the video. So until the next webisode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.